Last time we looked at the use of trend following indicators to help inform our trading strategies rules. But we only really covered what I call the happy path. Examples where the triggers work well. Of course, if it was always this easy, that would be great. But unfortunately, that's not the case. Trend following indicators suffer from several issues that make their use much more challenging. But with some careful consideration and planning, we can start to reduce the detrimental effect of those issues. So stay tuned. So last time in the introduction to trend following indicators, we used the moving average, which is probably the most common type of trend following indicator as our example. And specifically, we looked at its use as a trigger. So as a mechanism to help inform trade entry and trade exit. But I also started to allude to some of the issues that trend following indicators exhibit when used in this way. And it's these issues that we're going to start to look at in a little bit more detail in today's episode. And we'll also consider potential solutions to these issues, or at least ways that we can reduce the damaging effect of them. So last time we considered what are probably the most common ways of using moving averages for triggers in this way. Now the first of those was a turning point in the moving average. So here the moving average turns down and here it turns up. And we could use these to inform trade entry and trade exit. And this is obviously an example of the happy path that I talked about before, where the indicator appears to work very well. But take a closer look at the chart on the right hand side. Each of the circles here identifies another turning point, And each of these represents a much more concerning situation, because they obviously wouldn't give you the desired outcome. Now let's look at the second use of a trigger using a moving average. And for this one, we looked at the dual moving average crossover. And so here, where the faster moving average, so the one using the smaller number of periods, crosses below the longer term moving average, this is usually considered as a bearish signal. And when it crosses in the opposite direction, it's usually considered bullish. But as I've said on many occasions before, you must always backtest this to come to your own conclusions about which of these triggers are effective and which are not. Now here, if we compare this method to the previous method, we can see here, although the price would have triggered an early exit, the dual moving average doesn't. So this would have kept you in the trade for longer. However, just like all the other methods, this also experiences false triggers. So just in this small period of time here, the moving average lines cross over four or five times, and each of those would be producing a false trigger. Now, generally in trend following systems, the usual pattern is that there tend to be a small number of very successful trades, but a far higher number of trades that lose small amounts. And these, of course, turn the probabilities against you. Now, because of this, you'll usually struggle to find a viable system that just uses a trigger like this on its own. Maybe in the past, this type of system has tended to work in isolation of any other rules. But these days you'll probably struggle to get a viable system just by using a trigger like this on its own. But one of the things we can start to do and start to investigate in order to improve the reliability is to use filters. And by using filters to firstly categorize the market regime and then to help define rules to enhance your trading system, 
I've found that this can often improve the probabilities. And so this is what we're going to take a look at in the next episode. So be sure to check out that episode when it gets released. If it's already been released, then you can click on it at the top of the screen here. Remember to give me a like if you've got value from today. And now until next time, trade safe.